Hello, Covenant Church. Welcome back. We hope you had a great week and came expecting great things from today's worship experience. Here are our first couple of announcements. First up, we have a worship and baptism night coming up on July 20th at 6.30. So it's not this Wednesday, but it's the next. We love having the opportunity to celebrate this life change, and we want to join and take that walk with you in taking that next step. If this is a step that you want to take, please call the church office or text the word baptism to our phone number here, 704-735. 1559 to fill out a quick form. Next, the Covenant Kids are hosting a three day karate camp here at the church. That's going to be on July 18th the 20th where they will learn some basic skills of karate and a bit of self-defense. This is a camp for kids who have completed second grade through fifth grade. Sign-ups are live everywhere right now. Another kids ministry announcement. This is a huge week for Covenant Church. We are hosting VBS 2022 starting tomorrow through Friday, but remember, we have two separate times this year for different ages. If your children are pre-K through rising kindergarten, their VBS will be each day from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If your children have completed kindergarten through fifth grade, their time will be each night from 6 to 8.30 p.m. We already have hundreds of kids and volunteers signed up right now, but we want even more. We want as many children as possible in our community to come have fun, laugh, dance, and have a chance and an opportunity to learn and find about Jesus. So that being said, parents, get your kids here, get their friends, their neighbors, and even their cousins. Even if you're a grandparent, bring those grandkids and maybe give your kids a break. You can sign up online at our website in our official church app. For people who sign up the day of being tomorrow, we will have registration at the front of the church each night. So be sure to encourage people if they say they don't think they can come because they didn't sign up soon enough or online soon enough, please tell them not to worry about it. They can just sign their kids up the night of.
Wow. Man, that was good. If you're visiting with us, you may not have recognized this or noticed this, but our, uh, our worship pastor's out of town this weekend. Isn't it pretty neat that we're so blessed that if you don't know that? So, Lisa, thank you uh, for leading this crowd today. It was amazing and wonderful. And I looked up here on our stage one week, and this is, this is just a faithfulness of the Lord. By the way, I'm opening my cup. If you want to do that now, it'll be a good time because you know how these things are a little tricky. Unless you got a pocket knife or something. Yeah. But uh, I was looking up here on our stage one, one Sunday morning, and, and one particular Sunday morning we had seven worship leaders on the stage. And, uh, and I thought, man, how blessed is that? What, what an amazing thing that we have seven or eight worship leaders. But that, that's not the point of them, by the way. There are a whole lot of people that can sing good on the earth. I'm not one of them, but I'm just saying there's a whole lot of people that can sing good on the earth. Uh, but the pursuit that these people have for the Father is what inspires my heart, and I want to I appreciate them so much. So thank you guys. If you if you're here uh, and you haven't been here, this is what is this week two. Yes, this is week two. I'm I'm doing this this series on on the on the Holy Spirit, and we we've, we've titled it Forgotten God. And I actually stole that from Francis Chan. He wrote a book called Forgotten God. And the point of it was is that we would uh, we 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 have a uh, a pretty profound understanding to some degree of what the father and the son are because we have relationships where we know who fought some fathers and we know some sons, but we have a real hard time understanding who the Holy Spirit is. He's like the third part, the forgotten part. And uh, so there's two books that I would encourage you guys to read um, if as we're doing this study or after we do this study or or whenever you want to do it. But they're just good books. One of them is. Forgotten God by Francis Chan, and the other one is The God I Never Knew by a guy named Robert Morris, and uh, they pretty much explain the story of of this third forgotten part of the Trinity that we, we have had a hard time relating to. So these first three weeks, at least, are very, very simple. Uh, they're, they're, I want to lay just a simple foundation for, for what we're going to study after this, because I think it's really, really important for us to see him in, in simple, just black and white, fundamental, uh, and I don't, I'm just going to repeat that word, simple terms. I think one of the, the great problems of the church is that we, we can turn the simple into something really, really hard to understand about that quick. And, and it's because, I'll tell you why we do that. It's because we like being self-righteous. We like being, we, we like acting like we're smarter than everybody else. And so we'll make it difficult. And plus we like making it about us. If we, can, if we can figure out a way to make this relationship with us and God about us instead of about him, we'll do that. And we'll give ourselves credit for being saved when you don't deserve any. And we'll give ourselves credit for being a good Christian when you're not one. Amen? That's in the Word. And we'll give ourselves a lot of credit just to give ourselves credit because we like getting credit because we like us. And, uh, uh, but the truth is the gospel is very simple. And so is an understanding of the Holy Spirit. So I'm, I'm bringing it from in really simple terms. Uh, one of the things I really feel like, really feel like has helped me in my, in my life, I, I've never considered myself some kind of great scholar or uh, I'm not, this is not me demeaning myself or anything like that. Uh, I've never had that problem. I had to work the other direction to get my pride in order most of my life, to be honest with you. But I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm, it's, that's, it's not about that. But one of the things I really believe really, really helped me in when I was cutting my teeth learning the word of the Lord because I didn't go to Bible college and get some of the training that some people get is that is that I spent 12 and a half years in youth ministry and I and I and I began to when I when I would teach in youth ministry I would I would teach from a perspective if I were them and I was my 16 year old knucklehead self and I was a knucklehead and I'm still a knucklehead sometimes but anyway I would try to teach from that perspective to where I I would I figured if my 16 year old Mike can understand it then my 30 something year old Mike would understand it and so the, I just I just really believe that's pretty I just think it's all simple I just really do believe it's simple so these these first three weeks are important last week I talked about seven truths about the Holy Spirit and and if you went back and read the list uh this week when you when you get the notes online and things like that you probably thought to yourself well that was pretty simple it was like stuff I already knew and I'm fine with that and I'm fine if you already know it some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about today you're gonna already know but some of you not and 
The reason I'm laying such a simple foundation is because it's simple, number one. But number two is because we have so many new people that are really, really hungry to know the Holy Spirit in a way that is, is amazing. So this week we're going to talk about the personality of the Holy Spirit. And next week I'm going to talk about the attributes. That word just simply means the characteristics. And why, why does it matter? Why do we need to know the truths of the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit, or attributes of the Holy Spirit? And, and the answer to that question is pretty simple. In fact, next week on the newsletter, in fact, I wrote it between services uh, on the newsletter next week, uh, on the back of the newsletter, you know where I do that blog thing? Uh, I answer that question to some degree. Why do we care? Why do we need to know these simple truths? And, and, the, and the truth is this. Uh, number one, it will make, a, make him much more relatable to us. And number two, it's really important when, you, when you're building a relationship with anyone is that you actually assess to some degree what they're bringing to the table, what they bring into the relationship. And I don't think the, the a building of a relationship with the Holy Spirit should be a whole lot different from how you build other relationships. And I'm going to use David and Linda since they're on the front row. It's your fault. Y'all do this. Y'all sit here. Um, is that when you guys met, uh, how did y'all meet? I know it wasn't online. I know y'all weren't in a date nap. You know, so. Huh? I had a party at a bar or something. That's all right. We don't care. We all met. It wasn't a bar. It's just a party. Okay. Did y'all ever go to any bar? No. <laughs> no, but my yeah, yes. Okay. But my point with that, with this whole conversation, is it's not it's not even about where they met. It's that when you begin to build a relationship, the first thing that you you actually cling to with the, about each other is to, de- to to find each other's personality. Right? I mean, that's true with every relationship. It doesn't have to be husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. It, doesn't have to, it can be just in general relationship. Think back to the person that you were best friends with in high school. There's something about the, the personality that, that, that uh, attracted you to them. And then uh, quickly, almost the next step that happens, almost without even thinking, is that you begin to, you begin to pay attention to the attributes of that person in the relationship. Like, what, what are their strengths? What, are, what characteristics uh, make up the strength of who they are and you you begin to to assess that and the reason you do that is because the the worst thing that you want to do is be in a relationship with somebody who brings nothing to the table some of y'all have been in a relationship I could tell I looked at you because you don't want to be in a relationship so you 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 assess their attributes you what what about their life can make my life different if that's true in the way that you relate to human to human, it's, it's going to also be true in the way you relate human to the person of the Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 says, describes him as a person. Uh, and a person has a personality. And today we're going to talk about that personality. And that's where we're going to talk about attributes and add to the story. Uh, but I just, I just think it's important because I think that you will actually begin to understand when you, when you pay attention to the personality and the truths and the, and the attributes of, of the, the person of the Holy Spirit, not only what make them more relatable, it's going to make him more desirable. The Holy Spirit is, is an amazing person. Uh, I've come to this space in my life, and this is not a spiritual statement. This is just the, the space in my life. I ran my own life into a ditch when I was in my early 20s. I mean, just completely. I mean, it, from the outside looking in, it probably looked like everything was fine. But from the inside looking out, it felt like death. And it was, it was going in a lot of wrong directions. And, and I have no excuse for that. I, I grew up in church. My dad was a preacher. My parents were both Christians. My, we had 157 Bibles in our house. It, I had literally no excuse. I had been in church more. You know, if, if I ever had a drug problem, it was church. I was drugged to church every time the doors up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was just it, I had I, I was I'm without excuse when it comes to falling off that cliff and going off in that ditch. I I did that on my own. I did that to myself, and, uh, and, I, and I didn't even need a whole lot of help from the enemy. I did that myself, and so when I came back into a relationship with Jesus when I was 24 years old, and I found out that there was an opportunity to be a friends with the Holy Spirit, it became like life changing for me, and it it has become since that moment an everyday conversation like. I don't always address him as Holy Spirit. Like, if Chris and I are out to dinner, I don't, I don't look at her and say, Krista, what are you going to order, Krista? You know, hey, Krista, Krista. I, don't, I mean, in other words, I don't always address her by her, her name. Sometimes we have such a conversation that we went on a date Friday night, didn't we? Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> uh, 
we don't sit, she don't address me with Mike every single time she speaks to me. She does that a lot when I'm not listening, which happens a lot. <laughs> but when we're in conversations at the house, she don't say. If we're just sitting watching TV shows, she don't go, Mike, what do you think we ought to watch? Sometimes she'll just say, hey, turn that. I don't want to watch this. And I turn it to Hallmark, to that same movie. <laughs> to that same movie. Even though it's a different one, it is the exact same movie that we've watched 175 times before. But anyway, so my point with all of that, which is I'm in trouble besides that, uh, is that I don't carry on conversation. I don't always, sometimes I'll say, Holy Spirit, you know, but most times with me and the Holy Spirit, it's just like, he knows I'm talking to him. I know I'm talking to him. And I'll just be like, man, what am I going to do right here? I mean, like, I've had this, this has been heavy on me all day long. What should I do, you know? And it's, it's really important that you understand that the Holy Spirit is, is so connected to the Father and to the Son. He's the Trinity that lives in you. He's not on the other side of a, of a, of a mountain. He's not on the other side of some clouds. We, we have been, our mindset, we have been trained uh, that he's too holy to approach. We, you know, some of us, not all of us, we've been trained to, to, to keep our distance because we're scared of him you know, most of our lives. And what I'm trying to encourage you to do is, to, is the opposite. I don't want you to be scared of him anymore. I want you to know all the beauty and the wonder of the Father and all the beauty and the wonder of the Son is contained in the beauty and the wonder of the Holy Spirit. And He wants your relationship. He wants to be so intimate with you and friends with you. And until you can see Him in a personable way and, 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 and begin to see all the attributes that He brings into the relationship, you may not even want to be in relationship with Him. But I'm encouraging you that it's good and that you should want this. I want to challenge you to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit like you never have been before. Okay, so today we're going to talk about seven, seven uh, truths of his personhood, the, his personhood, the, the stuff that makes him relatable to us, makes him attainable t- to some degree from a person's standpoint, from a human standpoint, how, uh, how, how do these things work? So number one is this, uh, if we desire a relationship, and this is the truth, we must see him as a person. Does that make sense? If if you, if you only see him as a, a blob or a spiritual entity that lives like a cloud, that's like, like gases that just kind of floats around and walks through walls, and sometimes he comes in the room where you are, and sometimes he just... You, you're going to miss an opportunity because it's very, very hard for us to relate to entities that are, are not personable. So the Holy Spirit is a person. And if you begin to treat him like a person, like if you were going to be in, in an intimate relationship with a person or, or close friendship with a person, there will be certain things that, that begin to happen from your perspective that would guard that relationship in a way where you treated it with a different kind of respect. Some of you guys should be listening because this is the same way with your wives. Some of you guys, and maybe it's some of you ladies too, but some of you guys treat your wives like they're, they're like uh, some kind of item for you. You don't, you don't, you, you don't, you don't dive into the, to the parts where you, you you treat them as you wish you were treated, you know what I'm saying? And and I want, and I think the Holy Spirit, if you see Him as a person, you will, you will begin to desire a relationship with Him uh, from a perspective of I want to treat Him like I would want to be treated from a person standpoint, in the way that I love Him, in the way that I encourage, in the way that I speak to Him, the way that I acknowledge Him, and and so. That's number one point. You, if you don't desire, if you desire a relationship with him, you're going to, have to see him as a person. Number two, I want you to understand this is true about him too. Holy Spirit isn't just his name, but it's a description of who he is. That's important. This this personable uh, entity of a person that wants to be in relationship with you is the Holy Spirit. And the best way to understand this word is to just divide it into two. Even though I said last week it would have been a whole lot easier if God would have just called him Bob. Or John, you know, like, because Father, Son, and John, you know, we would we would have been able to do that one, but he didn't. He called him Holy Spirit, and the reason he called him Holy Spirit, the reason he's named Holy Spirit, is is simply this. Let's break that word in half. Holy. I, I need you to understand that he is absolutely holy, just as holy as the Father and the Son are holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. That's good for you. It's it's, it's important that he is because that means that you can trust where he's coming from. If, if his desire is to build an intimate relationship with you and to give you good advice, because John 14 and John 16 both encourage us 
that it was better for us if Jesus went away and left the Holy Spirit to reside in us. Amen? And so it says, why, why, why is that such a big deal? It says, because when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and guilt, and he will guide you into all truth. He's going to be like a conscience, conscience to you. Like He's going to be like an advisor to your life. If you live your life uh, being, doing only what the Holy Spirit advises you to do, I need you to understand it. It's coming from a place of holiness, holy love, holy pursuit, holy attitude, perfect. That's what that means, holy. All right? Now, the spirit part is, a, is, a, is, is, is the part that's harder for us to get. Even though I said he was a person, the spirit has this ability because he's the Holy Spirit to, 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 to move like freely to heaven and to earth with us in, in us, you know. He, in other words, he is, he's supremely connected to heaven, but he's supremely connected to me. He's supremely connected to heaven, but he's supremely connected to, to the universe, to all, huma all of humanity that would have him in their life, right? Uh, so that's the spirit part of him. He's, he's a person, but he's not like a person you've ever met. Number one, he's holy. Number two, he's spirit. All right. Number three thing uh, is is in, in relation to him is the father fathers us, the son saved us, and the spirit deals with our soul, our our internal man. Right. So we can get that part of the father fathering us because just about every time we relate to God the Father in Scripture, He's playing the role of a father. Does that make sense? That's why it's called God the Father. Every, he treated Jesus like a son. He treated Moses like a son. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ezekiel. He, 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 he stands in this authority of father. And he, his love is the same as the love of Jesus. His love is the same of Holy Spirit. But father treats you like, uh, like you're a son or daughter. The, the relationship. So... The father, father, that's what, what did Jesus, the Bible, there are scriptures that talks about Jesus sticking closer than a brother. You know, like he, it's, it's, this is the part where, where he, 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 he came and did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Jesus saved us. Jesus didn't die on a cross that was his cross. He died on a cross that should have been your cross. He didn't die for sin that was his sin. He died for my sin. So this, man, you're talking about love. The whole relationship with Jesus is full of love. Well, I'll tell you something. The whole relationship with Father is full of love because guess who sent Jesus? The Father sent Jesus because he was in love with you. And Jesus died, lived perfectly and died in your place because he was in love with you. And then they left the Holy Spirit who's in love with you to carry you through life. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit deals with our souls. In other words, what his desire is to do is to guide you into truth that is in, internal uh, so that when you react in an external way, that it is filtered through the Holy Spirit of the living God and has a Holy Spirit attributes to, connected to it. Because the, the parts of your life that you failed on, let me tell you what you did. Instead of letting the Holy Spirit filter it, you, your, your flesh often filtered it, and it came out of you, and you begin to act out in ways that weren't filtered through the holiness of His Spirit, and you begin to react in ways and had an attitude in ways or about things that had nothing to do with Him, and those things literally lead you to destruction at some point in your life. So why is it, so why is it important? To have Holy Spirit relationship is because you, you need this, the, the, you know you need the peace, number one of the Holy Spirit. Peter said that, that he can bring a peace that passes understanding. What does that mean? A peace that you can't explain. That comes through the Holy Spirit. But he also, this, this filter that the Holy Spirit wants to fill your life with will give you an ability to make right decisions and react rightly, not in the flesh, and to, be, to build relationships that are, that, are, that are secure and positive and moving in right directions versus having an attitude uh, in relationship that moves you in bad directions. Because every single time your flesh reacts, it will generally bring destruction. Every time the Holy Spirit reacts through you, it will bring wonder and glory and fruit of the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? So he deals with your inner man so that your external man will reflect the heart of the Son and the Father. We're good so far. Anybody need anything else to explain it? It's pretty simple, right? Let me tell you something else about him. He has personality. Because if he's a person, he has a personality. Sometimes we view that God is just this rock-hard square box of a person that, oh, my God, he's born. No, let me tell you something. I've never met more freedom and more joy than since I've come into a relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, through the cross. It's amazing the, 
the freedom and the joy and the wonder that I have living in this, the, the parameters of his love is way better than the mess I found outside of those parameters. All right? So the fact that he has personality is important. The Holy Spirit has emotions. We're going to read a couple of scriptures to close in just a minute that kind of, kind of bears some of these points, kind of proves out some of these points. But, but he experiences joy and sadness and anger and pleasure. And you're like, well, I like all of them except anger. Uh, true story, though. He does have anger. I mean, he, he, he can be hurt. Just, just about every emotion you, you, you see. Jesus said there was a time when Jesus got really mad on earth. Y'all remember that? When he went into that temple and he cleared that place out, he went like, hey, can you guys leave? This is not comfortable. No, he took a whip and started turning over tables. And So anger is not the problem. He said in the word, be angry, but don't sin. So the fact that he gets angry, this, just about every, every emotion that you can feel in, in your person, the Holy Spirit can feel in his person. That's what my point was with all this. Thus, it's, it's important that, you, uh, that you, you, you treat him in a delicate way. He's a gentleman. He, he's, he's got a purity of love and a desire to be with you, but you can, you can, you can push him out. You can, you, can, you can move him out of your life because sometimes when you reject him or you grieve him or maybe Maybe by your actions or maybe sometimes even by your words, you're telling him to stay out of your mess, stay out of my business. He will say, okay, he'll be grieved and hurt and broken because of it, but he, he will do what you ask him to do. I, mean, so I didn't think about this till this morning, uh, but there's also another part of myself that I discovered having come into a relationship with the Holy Spirit uh, more and more and more and more and more as I've gotten older is that my emotions have also changed when he's in me. Like, they say, you know, that you need to worship him till you start looking like him. You ever met couples that have been married so long they look like each other? Yeah, me too. Uh, I, got a, I mean, I got a chance of being good looking one of these days. I'm going to start looking like you. So... My point is, I think the same is true with the Holy Spirit. I think the more you're in a relationship with him, the more you begin to reflect him and maybe even start looking like him a little bit. Amen? I think that's his plan. So what I notice about my own life is that uh, y'all, may, y'all may be shocked with this, but, when, but I was uh, most of my life I'm kind of reserved like as far as like no highs and lows. And, and that's still true to some degree as a pastor. I don't, I don't get way up there or generally way down there. But I, I live, but one one of the things that can alter my emotion very quickly is when I feel the Holy Spirit. Like uh, I just feel like He's there's this liberty that happens with Him sometimes that's just absolutely amazing. And and I never saw myself being one of those people that would be like, "Yay!" in church, you know, because we didn't in my church when I was growing up. If somebody said "Amen," and we were like, <laughs> we like marked him. I remember one Sunday, Uncle Hugh. My grandma's brother in the middle of my dad's preaching went, Amen. And I thought to myself, what takes wrong with Uncle Hugh? <laughs> Disrupting the name service here. You know? uh, here, and y'all talk with me sometimes, like back and forth. You know, like, yeah, amen, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you, you know, whatever. But, but anyway, what I think has happened in my, in my re- emotion since, it, since I came into a relationship with the Holy Spirit is that, is that sometimes I reflect him in me you know like like I'll jump around and run around a little bit like and, and I don't mean that for attention I'm just saying that sometimes I just feel like going you know like and and sometimes I just go yeah hallelujah praise God yeah I mean in general I'm not gonna do that at Walmart you know what I'm saying and I even when I played ball and stuff like that I didn't like yell you know but like with the Holy Spirit I so I, I'm saying this not as a judgment but I think some of y'all probably could use a little bit of like jumping around some of y'all are, are still bound up in the, oh, that's not my personality. Well, listen, it's not your personality he's after. It's his. All right? All right? So, uh, so, and I'm not saying you need to do anything for attention. And I'm not saying your worship needs to look like mine or Grady's or whoever. I'm just saying uh, there's, there's some things that have probably changed the more the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and you start reflecting him. Don't be surprised if you're just sitting here one week and go, 
and tears just starts crying. Mean, I, I cried the whole way through worship today, and I don't even know why. I just cried. You know? And so anyway, it's just I just think my emotion gets altered. Why? Because he has personality. Number five, uh, he has, check this out. Man, think about this. This, this. this person wants to live in your life, and he has the mind of God, the wisdom of God, and knows the will of God. You mean to tell me, like, you, you, there, you don't have to, like, pray and, like, I'm going to wait for seven years and find out the answer to this question. The one living in you has, has the mind of God, the wisdom of God, and knows the will of God. It's, it's more about creating a space where there's, there's such a relationship between you and the Holy Spirit that you can actually hear what he's saying to you in the moment. But you won't do that unless you think he's a person. And you won't do that unless you believe he's good. And, and so I'm just giving you information. Maybe we're not all in a space yet where we, we're that kind of connected to him. I mean, it's, he, he wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you stuff about your life. He, I mean, sometimes he just, sometimes the Holy Spirit will look at you and say, I mean, I mean he doesn't do this to me, but he said to some of y'all, he probably like, your, your hair looks really good today. You know? He looks at me and goes, your hair is really gone today. But you know what I'm saying? There are times when, when you just need an encouragement of the Holy Spirit and the personality of the Holy Spirit to look at you and say, man, you're, you sure are beautiful to me today. Or, hey, call so-and-so. I bet she could use an encouragement today. I mean, that's, that's what he does. He, 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 wants to, he wants to do that. And it, because why? Because he has the mind of God, the wisdom of God, and he knows the will of God, right? Number six, uh, he lives in us for the express, express purpose of teaching us the will and the ways of God. So the reason these two are kind of on the page, which I didn't do, I'm glad they did it. If you think about him having the mind, the wisdom, and the will, and he has intimate knowledge of that because he is God. If you think about that living in you for the express purpose of teaching you and drawing you to the will and ways of God, it will change your whole relationship with the Father, right? So I just want you to trust that these things are true. Uh, we'll prove them out in Scripture when we're going through this study, but it's it's going to be amazing, you know. So I just want you to, I want you to see the simplicity of the gospel uh, where where he's concerned. And then finally, the seventh thing is he is constantly communing with God and wants to constantly commune with you, because this kind of brings it back all together. He he has the ability to live here in me and to be fully communing with the Father while at the same time communing fully with me and God in my life. Wow. Really, it's what we all need, really. Every, it's, it's, it's the very thing that every single one of us in this room need. All the discernment you'll ever need to know, all the, all the advice you're ever going to need to know. I mean, uh, should I invest in this? Holy Spirit knows. Should I date that guy? Usually no, but the Holy Spirit knows, right? Should I, should I be in business with this person? Should I take that job? Well, see, not, hey, don't make me bring y'all back into this. We already discovered y'all met in a bar. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't a bar. Was so, you know what I'm saying? That, that the God the Father, the heart of God the Father, is is fully invested and he's the Holy Spirit is fully aware of that 24-7 and he lives in you. So the challenge must be then, am I going to live with a measure of him in me or am I going to live with a fulfilling of him in me? Am I going to believe that there are two different things that happened? Am I going to believe there are two different things that happened? Like when I got saved, because y'all know that the people who, who went in Acts 2 to wait for the gifts of the Holy Spirit were already saved and had the Holy Spirit. And I will prove that to you. And so a lot of us are living in this space right here. We're just trying to. I got marked. I gave my life to Jesus in Bible school when I was seven. And, and I'm just going to try to survive till the end. And God doesn't need you or want you to just survive to the end. He wants you to thrive to the end. He doesn't. Does that mean everything's going to be easy? Nope. No, it's not. But you're going to have a source, a person walking with you through it. Amen? 
So let's look at these three scriptures that they're going to kind of highlight a few of the things I talked about today. This is this one has to do with the emotion and the and the personality of the Holy Spirit, uh, where he says this: "And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption." Wow, it means he can be grieved. That's 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 an indicator. Don't grieve him. Why? Because if you if you push him out of the scenario, if you push him out of your life, who, who's going to help you make the right decision on this? Who's gonna Who's gonna Who's gonna encourage you on this? Exactly. You. It's It's like you 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 must begin to look at him like a person with emotion, and treat him with the honor and and, and respect that he is due, so that you don't grieve him or hurt him and push him away from your life. Because if you If you want him away from your life, he will walk. He will, he will back up from your life. He won't ever leave you or forsake you. But he, but he can't be the fullness that you need in the middle of the moment. All right? So uh, next, next verse is uh, Romans 8. I like this one. Likewise, the Spirit. You can actually move, put the word Holy Spirit in front of this if you want to. It wouldn't be wrong. Likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Anybody ever had any of those? Yeah. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are. How many of you had a moment in something that you didn't know? I don't even know how to pray for this. I don't even know what to do here. I'm just such a mess right now. I don't even know how to, I don't even, well, guess what? You got one that's on your side, right? That's talking to the Father about the thing that you're going through. Knows fully the will of God, will of the Father, right? Because he is. And he wants to give you the answer to that question. We don't know what we should pray for as we all, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He's, He's crying out in the heavens for you. I think you can attach yourself to him. I believe, in fact, uh, and I don't want to confuse anybody with this because we're going to get to this later on, but I believe this is a picture of, of praying in the Spirit, you know, like, uh, but I think this is the point with the whole verse is, is, is not necessarily that today. It's that you have a Holy Spirit that's living in you that is constantly battling for you about the thing that you need in you. All right? And then finally, the last thing, the uh, last verse for the day is, and I like this one. The reason I pulled this one out is because I wanted you to know how very personal he is. So while Peter uh, thought about the vision, so what's going on here? Well, you know, Peter is, he's been staying with some people that you probably don't know that well anyway. But anyway, he's, he's tired, so he goes for a rest, and he has this vision, dream or a vision, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. And Peter's contemplating, wonder what this means. And, and if you want to know the whole context of it, read Acts 10, but I think it has something to do with, with Jewish people and, and Gentiles. And, 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 and anyway, it was, it was a complicated issue they were dealing with. While Peter was thinking about the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are coming to look for you, which, by the way, is related to the vision. Okay? So what's the point of me bringing this up is that there are going to be times if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, There'll be times when he, he, he literally speaks to you and says, go here, call them, stop here, go there, stop here, go there, stop here, go there. I mean, he, he, he can be so personable to you. And I think for most of us, the very thought that, that the Spirit of God would, would, would have conversation with us, we, all, we have always seen, most of us, it's just this one-sided relationship where I can talk to him, and, and I hope this works out without the knowledge that he can speak to us and guide us and direct us down paths of his righteousness. And that, I just want you to know that's possible. All right? Y'all good on this so far? So there's truths from last week and there's truths from this week. And we're going to keep adding to it. Next week we're going to talk about those attributes. And, uh, and, and, and I want you to know that, and this is going to lead us kind of into the table of the Lord, that, that just about every single bit of this teaching was birthed in my heart from a scripture that I read in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, where it says that no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. All right? So that's, that's who I want leading my life. That's who I want leading your life. That's who I want leading our life. I, I want you to know that that the Holy Spirit of the living God wants to live in you so that your, your very life proclaims 
that Jesus is Lord. Right? Y'all in on this? And we're going to get to the parts in the, eventually where we're going to be praying for each other and, and different things like that. And, and since I know that we can't say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, it kind of leads us. I want you to go ahead and uh, open up your, your, your bread, whatever. It's supposed to be bread. It represents the body. Let's get past that. So you wouldn't have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said again in John, he said, if I, if I don't leave, you can't get this. Let me tell you something that happened before that. Before Jesus could leave and leave with us the Holy Spirit, one of the requirements of the law of God was that a perfect lamb be sacrificed for the remission of sin. Israel did it once a year, every year. It's just... They would, they, would, they would try to take an unblemished lamb and they would kill it and they would bring the blood of that lamb and sacrifice it on the altar and it would, it would, it would kind of handle the remission of their sins for the year. But Jesus came and, 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 and he, the lamb of God, he, he came and did away with the sacrifice. He said, listen, I'm going to do something once and for all. He said, this time we're not going to get a lamb. This time it's going to be me. I'm going to be the lamb. And Jesus came and he fulfilled the law and the prophets, the Bible says, and that he, he fulfilled the very law of God. He came and lived absolutely perfect from beginning to end. He didn't fail not one time. He didn't, he didn't fail in his mindset. He didn't fail in his actions. He didn't fail in his attitude. Every single thing about him was perfect. And when God looked to the son, his own child, he said, he's done it. He, he, has, he, has, he has lived a perfect life. And the night before Jesus was to be crucified, he went to have a conversation with his father and and Jesus, this proves Jesus is human. He looked at his daddy and he goes, is there not another way? I've walked down the road and I've watched people be beat like I'm about to be beat. And I've watched people hang on crosses like I'm about to hang. He said, is there, is there any other way? And he, he went immediately after saying that sentence. He goes, but not my will. Your will be done that you might be glorified. And the next day they arrested Jesus and they beat him to a bloody pulp, y'all. Hey. He, he was literally unrecognizable. And I'm not telling you all this to make you feel any kind of emotion. I'm just telling you the truth. His disciples probably at that moment remembered a conversation that I had just the day before. Jesus was, in, was with his disciples and he, he broke the bread and he passed it to them. And he said this, he said, what, whatever you do, from this point forward, I want you to remember me. What, what, are, we, what are we supposed to be remembering? What, what, what are we supposed to remember when we look at this bread in our hand? What you're supposed to remember is this, and not ever forget it, is that Jesus Christ was beaten for you. See, the thing that you deserve, he took upon himself. You know, most people would have died before they got to the cross. But Jesus endured the pain and the beating and even the cross for you and I. And the reason that he didn't want us to ever forget is because he knows our tendency to forget. And if we forget that he did it and it's about him, we'll make it about us. And if the bread and the cup do one thing, it's this. It will make you know it's not about you. And so he broke that bread. And I want you to look at it. And I want you to remember in your mind right now, if you need to close your eyes, do it. But I want you to just acknowledge today. I want you to remember. I want you to acknowledge today that his body was beaten for me. Remember that, okay? So he broke the bread and he passed it. And he said, eat this, remembering me. And not only was his body broken for you, listen to me, y'all. One of the, uh, the, the tenets of, of the law of God that was in place is that if, if, a, if a new covenant was ever to be created, it would require bloodshed. So not only did Jesus have his perfect broken body destroyed for us, Jesus allowed his blood to be poured out for us. Why? Because if we're going to create a new covenant, if we're going to literally destroy the curse of sin and death and hell, 
It required bloodshed. And Jesus looked to the Father that night and he goes, if you need blood, take mine. Don't take theirs. You know that he died on the cross not knowing if you would ever care that he did. And Romans says this. It says what, you know, that, that he, he, he died on the cross not knowing what my reaction would be. That while I was yet in my sin, Christ died for me. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, you're now under a new covenant. And by that, I mean you don't have to live under the old one. His blood was poured out for us. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's the only time in the history of the earth something red can make everything white. The red blood of Jesus Christ made us white as snow by faith. It's not about us, it's about him. Don't ever forget that. And he passed that cup to all of his best friends and he said, whatever you do, moving forward, remember me. Why don't you stand with me? I just want to pray a prayer of blessing of you as we leave today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to speak your blessing over our church people today, Lord. I, I thank you that you're taking us on a journey. I believe that revival is coming, and I believe that it's already here to some degree. And I believe that you want every single one of us so connected to your Holy Spirit in this space and place that it would change all of our existence. And I pray over every single one of these people that they would absolutely, positively have a hunger for you like they've never had before. And they would run harder and deeper than they've ever gone before. I pray that as we enter our mission field, we leave the safe space of this building, God, that we will represent you well all, that, all, all this week long at work and at Walmart and Ingalls and wherever else we go, that we will be your children wherever we are and act like it. I pray protection over these people, Lord. And again, I pray that stay hungry this week. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Y'all have a blessed week, y'all.